And like way better. We're going to have polls, live polls, so that you and me can set up the polls on our own website. Can we dance on them? Then there will be a history of the poll. And a we can history try of the to, poll. So that I don't want to know the history of any poll. <laughs> if someone is watching the live stream, they'll be able to see the poll. You know how we have straw polls? So instead, if they're watching an archive, if they watch the archive on our site, they should be able to see the poll. The history of the poll. Grody. All of the history. That We're live now. As if it was never erased or cleaned. The whole history of the poll. The poll should be cleaned at some point or another. <laughs> We're just discussing an upcoming website feature. Welcome to the WAN show. Thank you guys very much <laughs> for tuning in. My laptop screen just... Wow, it just completely <laughs> crapped itself. I wish I was screen sharing with you guys. I opened up a Google Doc and like my desktop icons like flashed through it for a couple seconds <laughs> and they're gone. Computers, man. Computers, man. Welcome to the show. <laughs> um, so let's kick things right off. Let's 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 make things easy for ourselves. We've got a bunch of great topics for you today. First up is Google Cardboard. You can use an ordinary cardboard box and a smartphone to make your own virtual reality headset. Okay, it might not be quite as sophisticated as the Oculus Rift, but more or that on... Easy. Or, or as easy as what I just did just there. <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated than that, but it should make for an easy, low-cost way to make that happen. Next up, we've got Ubisoft. Just keeps on digging. It's almost like this week they were trying to find something popular to say. So that we don't like DRM, we're gonna do things. Yeah, we're which cool don't still. include getting rid of DRM. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> what else we got? We also have YouTube tip jar, so you'll be able to tip up to something. Talk about that later to YouTube creators while watching their videos. And Twitch and YouTube are both gonna be playing at 60 FPS now. Wow, so 60 FPS to U-Type. u I can watch PewDiePie yell with that much more clarity now. Tweetube. Tweetube. All right, intro time. We are moving the microphone down. Probably sounds horrible. Ah, it's not that bad. I've got it in my ears. All right, we have a few sponsors for you this week. Uh, earlier this week, we actually did a sponsored live stream. We call these Ask the Expert, and we're going to talk to you guys about what we discussed with Darren Lynch from Intel, as well as give you guys the exclusive link to watch the archived live stream. So I hope you enjoy that. Next up, we've got Squarespace, and that's not the one that I meant to do. Wow, back to this, and oh, now everything is <laughs> Bricked and terrible. Okay, Squarespace, 10% yeah. off with offer code Linus. Also, we are going to announce the winner of a free one year Squarespace subscription. And finally, we've got Dollar Shave Club. Shave time, shave money, join the club. Visit Dollar Shave Club in order to get high quality bathroom supplies shipped straight to you, your door. And that is it for my. Oh, yeah, and it's not very expensive, hence the dollar. I mean, it doesn't cost a well, it can cost a dollar, but it doesn't cost a dollar for like the really good stuff, but it's still a lot cheaper than the other thing. So I think I've gotten my point across now. And yes, the intro was playing and the music was broken. I actually kind of liked talking over the music. We should have music in the background. So um, next week we'll get like a music track. But for this week, can you just kind of beatbox while I do the show? <laughs> All right. So our first topic this week is going to be the, uh, well, if I had my topics open, I'd be able to do that. YouTube now runs at 60 FPS. They actually announced a really bunch of really. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is I'm a horrible beatboxer. I can't do anything. I have no abilities whatsoever. But if we actually had an actual beatboxer, that could have been maybe cool. I don't know. No, probably I know. not. I have about the beatboxing skills of like that random six-year-old kid on the playground who thinks he's a plane. That's, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or that kid that used to run around the track while making motorcycle noises. <laughs> the sophisticated kids put the uh, playing cards in the spokes. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
yeah. I, I, I did that when I was like 12. I think I did as well, actually. Yeah, I think I should have been younger than 12 when I was doing that. <laughs> so. All right, so this was originally posted on the forum by RT. YouTube now supports Le 60 FPS. I actually retweeted this tweet last night because I was pretty stoked on this news. But there you go. So what they say is motion intense videos will look even better on YouTube when we launch support for 48 and 60 FPS. So bring on the Hobbit piracy, since that's the only thing that comes to mind that runs at 48 frames per second. No, but seriously though, higher frame rates are better for many things. I know you guys are probably expecting me to say, well, now every single video on YouTube should run at 60 FPS, but that's not necessarily the case. Gameplay will definitely benefit from this. Um, things like running around with a camcorder, probably not so much. The main benefit, the reason that we shoot all of our channel super fun stuff, for example, in 60 FPS is the ability to slow it down yeah. to half speed and still play at 30 FPS, which to the eye with appropriate motion blur does still look very fluid. The problem with games is that the eye and graphics cards, they, well, they don't inherently have motion blur. They don't actually um, help you put the pieces together of each of these frames the way that something like a film does. So 60 FPS, exciting. One little trick, yeah. you have to turn it up to 1080p in order to yep. enable 60 FPS. Also, if you're in Firefox, you might not be able to see it automatically. So if you go download all HTML5 or some other HTML5 add-on, which can switch YouTube to HTML5 by forcing it, um, then you'll be good to go. I am so over Firefox at this point. Between it logging me out of the forum all the time and just flat out not working very well and crashing a lot over the last little while, I think uh, we've pretty much broken up. So Firefox is now my tertiary browser. Whoa. Yeah. What's yeah. your second? At home, I am, I'm actually using Chrome i.e. Uh, Firefox. Why not like Opera or something? Opera doesn't work with anything. Yeah, it does. No, no. I use... I it's use, running on Chromium. Okay, Google straight up doesn't support Opera. And Google doesn't support Opera? No, they, they say blah, 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 blah. Sometimes when you log into stuff, it'll be like, uh, yeah, this feature works on Firefox and Chrome. And then half the time it doesn't work on Firefox and the other half of the time it doesn't work on Chrome. So I have a feeling within the next few years, Google is going to try to basically eradicate everything except for Chrome. Because I, I honestly think a lot of the issues that are coming in are based around Google just being like, nope, 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 we're it's, doing all of this. It seems to be mostly Flash related for Firefox for me. Yeah. And I mean, it's not like Adobe and Google are in cahoots. So I think it's got to, I got to just blame the Mozilla team for this. <coughs> I don't know. But if the Flash thing's your problem, just download the HTML5 add on and you're good to go. Yeah, even then. You, not everything runs on HTML5. Sometimes Flash things exist and then my browser crashes and then and this is this is something that I have an issue with with both Firefox and Chrome is it seems like about 30% of the time the restore last browsing session feature just <laughs> doesn't work. I've literally never had a problem with that with Firefox. I had it happen last night. Last very night. Last night was my last did night. Did you have multiple with... windows open? Of course I did. I always do. You Why know do what you my computer looks like. Open? Because some of because I need to be able to alt tab between certain sets of tabs very quickly. So you for guys example, see, like he's complaining about his RAM. He has to upgrade his RAM. Yeah, he doesn't I've... do anything other than web browse. I have six gigs his, of RAM. He's capping his RAM. I have to upgrade my desktop. My browser's taking like five gigs of RAM. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. I t I'm having troubles defending Firefox lately. I hope they pick it up because, I don't know, I feel a lot more safer on Firefox than I do on Chrome. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, all right, so, ca oh, this is something really cool that also came out of the uh, VidCon event recently. They are adding caption crowdsourcing. So, so every single video will just say butts, 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 butts on the bottom. Well... Probably, the yes. first thing I thought of when I read that was like, okay, every single video that's going to attract like a certain crowd is just going to have like 
but yeah there's going to be a lot of potential for this to be griefed i have to think though that once the initial sort of spam dies down it'll probably start to it'll probably yeah. settle in i think videos like ours will probably do reasonably well by comparison and the way that i Except see it for this one which will probably just have butts 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 on it yeah someone will go and hide it like <laughs> three quarters of the way through where no one's going to be looking at the captions i mean especially in english it's probably going to be more a matter of going through and fixing the mistakes yeah. of the automatic one yeah um so i mean i'm sure youtube will be able to tell because in much the same way that they can take the audio track and they can caption it i'm sure they can uh, take the captioning and somewhat validate so it so figure out if it's like that far off yes okay that's, that's what i expect to happen although this is all just me guessing these features are not out yet. that makes sense though and if they're not doing that now they probably should and they'll probably think of that or figure that out at some point in time maybe pay us 10 percent um, yeah, exactly. so uh, I, I find a lot of the news that just happened, um, in, in this one segment are all like PewDiePie because it's YouTube 60 FPS and tip jar. So if he's having problem, well, he's, he's like, seems to be doing okay, for doing me. okay. But game streamers in general, aren't probably going to make as much money on their ads. So tip jars are going to help game streamers a lot. And 60 FPS is going to help game streamers a lot. So I find it actually kind of surprising that both these things are landing when traditionally they didn't really seem to care about game streamers. It's, it's actually kind of refreshing to see YouTube bend to the will of the community for a change yep. instead of just marching off in a direction and doing whatever the heck it is that Google they want. Google Plus integration. And then Screw you. just expecting everyone to sort of fall in line. I mean, we want you know higher quality content and we want this and we want that. It's like, guys, that's great, but people are not watching that. Yeah. They're watching PewDiePie. <laughs> Do whatever it is. Speaking of PewDiePie, I actually was this close to retweeting one of his tweets Whoa. for the first time ever. I do follow him on Twitter, and I agreed with this so hard. And I was just like, Google, what are you doing? Twitch plays Pokemon is in our chat again. Oh, lol. That's so cool. I saw him in last week, too. I was like, what the hell? All right, so I'm going to screen share with you guys for a second here. Check this out. So in the old days, I would click on my name and I would go to Video Manager. You can see that that's still working on this page for some reason. It must be a really old one. They changed it today. Yeah, there we go. So my name is now gone. This is great. I can show the before and after. My name is now gone. Now I get to click on this. I get to click on Creator Studio. Wait around for that to load its slow ass. And then I get to go way over here and click on Video Manager in order to manage my videos, which is where I spend 99% of my time when I am logged into my YouTube channel. Um, YouTube seems to be trying to pay attention to the needs of creators. They're finally giving us a dedicated YouTube yeah. creator app, which will allow us to manage things. That's actually pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Although honestly, there's not that much more that I needed to do. They could have just fixed, you know, broken, like outright broken stuff. Like here's a couple of examples. Um, when you're loading comments, it just stops working after a while and then you can't restore it other than by reloading the page and then scrolling <laughs> back to that point again. You can't see the most recent comments <sighs> first. And then the other one that was just broken as all heck is when I would try to reply to a comment, I think it is, and then go back it would reload the comments and I'd have to start over again at the top. It's like, you wonder why YouTubers aren't interacting with their audiences much. You're making it as difficult as possible for us. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's the, the comment system as a whole is ridiculous. I, I watched a video the other day that was uploaded that day. This was like a day or two ago, but for some reason it had the old comment system. Yeah. And it was so refreshing. It's I, so much better. I'm going to be honest with you. I couldn't tell the difference. Really? Yeah. I There was a video I recently. Immediately. It was a funk commercial that we did. And I was reading through the comments and everyone was freaking out about how it was the old comments. And I actually couldn't remember the difference between them anymore. The reply button's there on everything. Um, and honestly, it looked cleaner. It's mostly, mostly there are reply buttons on everything now. Like, people have basically just kind of accepted it, you know. I don't know. Drop trow and... I still have a problem. I'll read through the comments and someone will ask a question directed at me and I try to reply and I'm like, this is not possible. That still happens to this day. My favorite is that, well, the, and, and, but there are issues with the old comment system that I think people forget. 
In the old comment system, someone could have contact lock on and there would still be a reply button. So you'd click reply, you'd type up a nice long reply to them, you'd click it, it would go away and it would tell you this person has contact lock on. They did not receive your message. I actually <laughs> never ran into that. That's a lot worse. That's like a hundred times worse. At least I don't have to waste my time trying to reply to people who ask me questions that don't have a reply button on their comments. I can see up front. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't have to talk to you because you didn't do the thing. Yeah. yeah. So at least there's that. I don't know. All That's right. I think I ran Twitch Plays Pokemon off because the, the chat freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, smart guy. We actually My bad. We had someone cool in our chat for the first time ever. <laughs> I ran ever. away. <laughs> I mean, the rest of you are cool, too, but, like, someone, like, crazy famous on Twitch cool. Well, when, when my brother and I were streaming, we had Day9 come in. Seriously? Hi. Yeah. I think myself or my brother, I don't remember which one, was wearing a Day9 shirt, and after his stream ended, he went to the homepage and saw us homepage, and he was like, what? <laughs> so he came into the chat and was like, hello? Oh, he's still here! Still here! Yay! Hello! Anyways. All right, so our... Yes, you know, it's funny, because my issue on Firefox is that the forum keeps signing my, me out. My issue in Chrome is it keeps it, signing it, me it back in <laughs> when I sign out. Stop it! It's like, no, you must have your proper account for this. Listen to me! <laughs> All right, so this was originally posted by Twisted Dictator on the forum, and this is Ubisoft. The original article is from GameSpot. This is Ubisoft coming out and saying... Well, DRM can't stop piracy. Actually, this article is fantastic. So, it's so ridiculous. It's full of all the win. Okay, so <laughs> VP of Digital Publishing from Ubisoft says, I don't want us in a position where we're punishing a paying player for what a pirate can get around. So where you are right now, that position that you're like very deeply rooted in, you don't want to be there. Okay, okay. so Witcher developer CD Projekt Red uh, thinks that DRM is an ineffective way to stop piracy on the PC. Them, I actually believe because they've been reasonably friendly in the past. However, Ubisoft is just like, what popular thing can we say that gamers will like so that they will stop hating us as hard as we deserve to be hated right now? <laughs> and so that... that <laughs> oh, this, this is great. thing. So what's key for us is making sure we're delivering an experience to paying players that is quality. So the question becomes, what do we create as services or as benefits and the quality of the game that will just have people want to pay for it and so, i'm just kind of sitting here going blah 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 so okay the more services there are blah, blah, blah. the reality it is the more services there are in a game well pirates don't get that stuff so when it's a good game and there's good services around it you're incentivized to not pirate the game to get the full experience this is all true it's just that ubisoft um, it's not like they actually said, well, here's an upcoming game that we're going to go, you know, uh, Steam DRM only, or we're going to go... Zero actionable items. Yeah, there's, there's nothing. There's nada. Microsoft might as well, you know, uh, publish an open letter about how they're committed to PC gamers <laughs> for all the emptiness of this statement <laughs> that has nothing to do with anything. Oh my god. I mean, it's not like I agree with the pirates. I mean, this is this is this is interesting. Um there was a claim uh, that Bethesda's recently released Wolfenstein yeah. the New Order was pirated over 100,000 times in the first week. And obviously you can't say, oh, well, then they lost whatever 60 times 100, so whatever, mil $6 million in revenue, whatever that works out to. Um, they lost $6 million worth of revenue because of pirates. You can't really do the math that way, but... You can't do that math that way at all. We have to close. agree that it is a problem, and I don't agree with the typical, you know, quite frankly, stupid argument that, you know, oh, piracy doesn't hurt because it's, you know, basically like uh, if, I, if they deserved my money, you know, after I... If I played it... Okay, here, uh, this guy. This guy basically made me pretty mad. Uh, Russian takeout, okay? Uh, Is it this? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this guy's like... Well, people buy good or great games. The problem is when you have a game with a five-hour single player and lousy multiplayer, how do you justify 60 bucks for it? Piracy helps the individual to test the game. I downloaded 10 to 20 games this year and purchased the three to four that let me play for at least a few weeks. And I'm kind of sitting here going, well, no, because if you want to have the experience, you should pay for it. 
if the experience wasn't good wait. enough to have, then you don't have to buy it. And not every game costs $60. Wait, like, three weeks, and it'll probably be 30 Transistor, like, just came out, and it's already 25% off on Steam sale. Exactly. Like, so if you don't think something is worth the cost of admission at the beginning, then just wait a little while. And if you're not willing to wait, well, then I'm sorry. I guess you get to pay. And you can't just say, oh, well, if something can't be reused a hundred times, then it's not worth buying. I mean, by that logic, do you refuse to buy condoms? Nah. <laughs> or food? <laughs> uh. It's basically the same thing. It seriously is. No, I know. I was just trying something to think. that isn't reusable over and over again. Dogs we try to buy make them. food reusable. Dogs. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> you know, my old pony when I was a kid. Oh no. He would basically like if we if we imagine that this is the pony, the crap would come out this end. He would turn himself 180 oh, degrees. No. Yep. You know how that Not story good. is. I, I don't know, it's like, especially with how Steam works nowadays. We were talking about the Steam sale uh, last time on the show, about how it's just like, yeah, all this stuff has pretty much been on sale for these prices already. Like, not a ton of them were super amazing. That's that's because everything gets discounted so hard. Just wait, like, three days. I fear for Twitch chat. What? You can't reuse condoms? <laughs> Twitch chat. Twitch chat. <laughs> I mean, I guess theoretically you could. It's but the effectiveness. Well, I mean, I, it already has a pretty scary effectiveness. Ninety-nine percent is not that good. That's true. That's still one out of a hundred times. The which funny is still thing. Horrible. The funny thing about the ninety-nine percent effectiveness is that I'm not a hundred percent sure how you calculate that. Is it ninety-nine percent of the time you have sex? you won't cause a pregnancy, or is it 99% of the times that you would have caused a pregnancy, it doesn't? Because it's hard to... Because, I mean, if it's 99% of the time there won't be a pregnancy, it's not even helping as much as we think, because about 60% of the time to 70% of the time, the, the fertility is not an issue anyway, yeah, and nothing yeah. would have happened. So, hmm... That's, that is actually kind of interesting. Either way, it's still scary. I feel like we've gotten off topic a little bit. We have bit. a little bit. Maybe a lot of it. Let's talk about Android TV. We aren't even necessarily done with the previous topic. Oh, okay. What, do you have something to say? Because I can just take a drink. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I, I found it interesting that the main thing that he was saying was uh, services and benefits that they want to add on to games. If you've been noticing something they've been doing for a long time now is these, these multiplayer aspects that they've been adding to games. I don't know how many times you've talked to someone about that super awesome, enthralling Assassin's Creed multiplayer that you played with no one because no one really does that um or the awesome strapped on stapled together multiplayer that's in watchdogs i think they need to they're, they're talking about this quality of the game and quality services and benefits but a lot of their quality services and benefits don't really seem thought out it seems like they built the entire game and then we're like oh yeah we need these things that pirates don't get so we're gonna make this weird really really bad ship mini game in assassin's creed that this is the only way you can get certain items, and then we're going to put it in your ship, and everyone's going to hate it. So, cool. Like, I don't... Make good ones. Make interesting ways to work with your friends. And I know they're working on it. Like, uh, Far Cry 4 and Assassin's Creed Unity have these co-op things where someone can enter your game and then help you do, like, an open world thing, but they can't help you with storyline missions and stuff. And then... I don't really, that seems weird again, so I don't know. Maybe work on that a little bit, and then people might care. But for now, they're probably just going to pirate your game. I won't, but they probably will. And I, I think it's funny that they brought, they, they're they bringing all this to light right now. Yeah, I know, right? Because then everyone's going, oh yeah, I can just pirate all your stuff. Did you see how many comments there were about that? They're like, oh yeah, I was waiting for Watch Dogs, and then now I'm just going to pirate it. It's like, wow, why did you, wow. Not good timing. I wonder if piracy rates would go down if they just stopped talking about it. They just it shut up. <laughs> There's an interesting They thought. need to shut up, put their heads down, and work on stuff and make really good releases for Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. And What's the upcoming Assassin's Creed? Unity? Unity. Yeah, okay. French Revolution. Sure. Sure. That could be good. It could. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Hopefully they don't make the PC version look exactly the same as the console version. Oh, there was other there was another Ubisoft thing. They were saying, you know, why it's challenging to have the PC version come out at the same time as the console version and something blah blah blah. Because your higher ups in your company it. make them look the same. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. Uh, Android TV. So it looks like Google, uh, Google I.O., they actually had a bunch of stuff they were talking about. They showed off the upcoming Android L, whatever it's going to be, licorice, lollipop, ludicrous. Ludicrous. Keeping with our rap theme. <laughs> um, I hope Asus wants to do laptop integrations again with the, the new one. No. It ends with JK. Oh. And I will just never stop. All the terrible jokes. No, I don't want to talk about that. Anyway. Um, it weighs a lot. JK, it's light. So they showed off a bunch of really cool stuff. They showed off some really pointless <laughs> stuff. They're moving to a more circular sort of design language now, which to me is kind of like, oh, that's great. I'll put that on my circular phone that I don't have. I guess if, we, <laughs> if, we, if they want... If they want Android phones to stop looking like iPhones, so all these lawsuits can just go away. It's like discus things. Yeah, this is this is the Samsung Galaxy Milky Way, and it's like it's like this shape. That would be amazing. With like a sphere, it looked oh like God, a curved I can screen. See that curved screen sphere in the middle. Yeah, like, and like comes out the back. You know the the LG like you know orb flex. The orb flex. <laughs> It doubles as a discus. Throw it to your friend. <laughs> and the built-in accelerometer. Have speakers. The built-in accelerometer will tell you how fast it flew. <laughs> and when and when your friend doesn't catch it, it'll say, "Uh oh!" Well, it falls. <laughs> and you'll be able to hear it because it has a speaker the size of the entire bag. Yeah, all these smart features. The Samsung true. No, wrong. The speaker should not be the size of the back. I've been working on my LG G3 review as well as my Surface 3 Pro review, and they both have rear-mounted speakers, which is still wrong in this day and age. What if it's a discus thing? It's still wrong. <laughs> it's still wrong, and I still hate it. So you want, like, a bezel around the front of the disc for a circular speaker there? Yeah, bezel disc. <laughs> yeah, Bring it bezel on. Disc. Now with 30% more bezel. <laughs> New and improved. Uh, oh no. Oh, oh no. not this again. <laughs> Coming soon, Android TV. Now with 30% more TV. <laughs> Honestly, though. Actually, this, that might be applicable. This whole Android TV thing, I'm kind of sitting here going, like, how many times are you guys going to relaunch the same thing? It's like, we really, really, really want Android to run on your TV. The, the old, you know, little USB sticks, or uh, HDMI sticks, those aren't good enough anymore. Chromecast isn't good enough anymore. Uh, standalone boxes, like the Pivos player or that Asus thing. What was it called? I don't remember. Uh, something box i don't know i didn't care then I... all these all these google operating system things no we're doing much better now we're just doing regular android this time but with a different skin over top Yay. so it's xbmc but like <laughs> android or something and there's a world of content and games. There's actually not too much detail about it right now, but you can get Batman Begins, Man of Steel, The Lego Movie, and The Hobbit, Desolation of Smog, if you wanted to watch one good movie and, uh, one really good movie and two slightly less than good movies. Oscar nominated. Uh, there's going to be so much infighting on what movies you're talking about. They're adding voice control, which I guess is interesting. If you didn't already have a Chromecast and an Android phone, and this functionality seems like it could have just as easily happened that way. The one place where I see this really being valuable is in terms of more power hungry types of applications. Mm. So NVIDIA actually on their own blog is talking about this as well. They are saying they want the K1, so that's their upcoming chip. Of course they do. They want the K1 to be the first validated chip for Android TV, which could be interesting because we'd be looking at both a powerful local gaming experience as well as a streaming experience with, you know, Netflix and all that other stuff. And um, having the ability to stream from the cloud or view things and playback things and game locally, it seems like I guess it'll be somewhat valuable. I just, I don't see it as that different from so many other things that are out there. I mean, you look at something like Ouya. I mean, is this really different from Ouya with a skin on it? 
Is it? Is it? Skins a lot, though. Skins user experience. What do you complain about a lot with phones? Yes. Okay, the skin is important. I'm just saying, did we need a dedicated... I like my Chromecasts. I see no real reason to change from my Chromecast. Right. Well, Chromecast latency isn't anything special, so there's that. If you no, wanted to game like, on your big screen... I'm and... not going to play Android games on the big screen. No, you aren't. <laughs> but this isn't video we're talking about, so if we could see integration with their game, game stream technology... That like, could be cool. The way I'd like to see NVIDIA go... But then go... I have a shield. Right. Um, but what you don't have a way to do right now is get a low latency HDMI connection from your shield to your TV. Okay. So if that could be integrated, you could have a wireless controller or you could use your shield as a wireless controller. Like the way I see NVIDIA going with this to make it really successful is have there be an experience just for having an NVIDIA chip in the device. So they enable game stream as long as there's an NVIDIA chip in your device. Then if you have a shield, then you enable second screen type things like what Nintendo is trying to do with Wii U yeah. or with the ability to use your shield as a controller and then switch screens when you run away, just like Nintendo's trying to do with the Wii U, but hopefully better than the Wii U. Like a lot of the stuff they do with the Wii U is pretty stupid. Mario Kart 8 has sold 2 million copies. Boom which is unfreaking real not to mention how many Wii U's they're selling now. I think they're on track to sell more than PS4 and, and Xbox, Xbox One. One. I, if, the, if that's still trending, that was trending like that before we left for Highlander, so I'm not entirely sure anymore. Freaking badass, but, but yeah. what I do have to say about Mario Kart 8 and the Wii U is that the second screen is not very useful. The second, yeah, 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 it's dumb. You can make it a mini-map, but then like it's in your hands. It's in so your hands! I don't... Anyone who looks away from yeah. the screen for more than a split second in Mario Kart is, like, red-shelled up the ass, so, yeah. like, no. I don't know. But then I don't mind that controller for it, either, because if you try to use the motion controls for it, it's a lot better than a Wiimote. Mm -hmm. Way better than a Wiimote. Yeah. And then it, you can just not use the motion controls, then it's a really good controller for it anyway, so I get it. Yeah, the second screen doesn't work for that game, but I don't think they need the second screen to be amazing for every single game. Yeah, that's true. Um, so there's a couple more things for Android TV. It's, uh, so blah, 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 clean interface, allows multiplayer gaming with people on Android tablets. When was the last time you played a multiplayer game over Android This is with one someone? of the really big problems with Android gaming, is they're like, here's a new platform that you can take these games which are not made for this platform and play them on. And it's like, no. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's no the same. No one wants to do that. It's the same issue that PC gamers have. Nobody makes good co-op games for Android. It's like, what? Like, what? And, and uh, yeah, okay, okay, Twitch chat, you're going to have, like, four examples. I don't care. It's not really my point. My point is that it's not a focus. Android games are focused on this experience. PC, PC gaming co-op is starting to come back a little bit. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. I'll tell you what. When Microsoft releases, re-releases that Halo package for the PC, and it includes Halo 1 campaign co-op... Oh, God. Then, A, oh. you won't see me on WAN show because I'll be too busy <laughs> playing Halo campaign co-op. Yeah. And B, I will believe that something's changing. My dad and I went through and beat that campaign on every possible difficulty, not because we couldn't beat it on Legendary yet, just because we were bored. Like, I think we literally, I think we beat it on Legendary and then, like, went back and beat it on the other ones. Because remember, you'd get the different shields at the bottom of the level selector. Yep. So we got all of them. Because we were just like, this is cool. Because why not? And it was a really good game to co-op. The last mission, ah, oh, whatever. Everyone's like, trine, trine, trine. Yeah, yeah that's it's like one, one of, game, smartass. And we both love it, and we have a video review. And we finished it, and I played it with my wife, and that was great. And she was like, oh, that was fun. We haven't played games together in a long time. And I was like, yeah, that was fun. That was great. Um, and she was like, yeah, what other games can we play? I'm like, none. <laughs> <laughs> Portal 2 for like the not as good as the single player co-op that it has. Actually, the only game that we found to, uh, to play together recently is this one. It's actually a fantastic game and everyone should play it. It's, uh, it's free for the basic version. And if it ever manages to launch, then I'd love to show it to you guys. But in the meantime, C do you want to bring C up girl the... girl uh... in the chat said, Android TV equals every smart TV ever. Except probably a lot better. A lot better. Smart TVs are dumb. <laughs> and they're just terrible. They suck. <laughs> just made of so much terrible. Yeah. And oh man, that's another thing that's been driving me crazy about how to address it with the, uh, with the LG G3. 
So the G3 has one of the most terrifying end user license agreements that I've ever seen. And just with the recent thing that came out about their smart TVs and how if you don't agree to it, they just downgrade you to a dumb TV, it made me really uncomfortable to have like five checkboxes to tick off, including all this stuff about personal information sharing, yeah. just to, to use my phone. This is why pe more than one person asked me on Twitter if I would recommend getting a G3 because of how much I like the G2. This was before I even saw the G3, so it wasn't really fair. But either way, I said no because of the TV thing. It's your phone. There's going to be way more personal stuff on your phone than your TV, and they're being really ultra creepy about it. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. Not a big fan. LG's Not a big fan. Right Unfortunately, this game isn't launching, what but is it's it called? called it's called Pocket Tanks, and it's badass. So, you can... You, they actually have um, either Hot Seat Multiplayer, or you can actually do uh, LAN Multiplayer. Cool. So, my wife and I will sit in bed with our laptops, and like fire little rockets at each other with our tanks and stuff. She's pretty good at it. Is it, it. like been, in tanks? She's been kicking my ass lately. Is it like old school tanks, but like new and improved? It's not that new. We've been playing it since we met. We oh. met nine years ago. So okay. there you go. Not new. Not new gotcha. at all. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. I'm old and the things I do are old. <laughs> Along the lines of Android TV, this is interesting. Uh, Razor's throwing... Oh, come on. Uh, Hello. Technical difficulties. Boop, 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 boop. Thanks for that, Lee. <laughs> My awesome beatboxing. <laughs> that wasn't beatboxing, even. Isn't it just like making noises? No. Is what? Making noises is just making noises. <laughs> because I saw a beatboxing guy who was like doing other random stuff. Oh. Form a vocal is... per percussion. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. That's not percussion. I'm sorry. <laughs> boop. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I guess you're closer, but I still don't like it. <laughs> um, well, this is unfortunate. Okay, you might be on screen sharing duty for the rest of the show here. Oh, okay. What am I showing? Let's see if the issue is um, my output or if the issue is the Whoa, what am I showing? capture. Um, you're showing Razer's gaming micro console featuring Android TV available this fall. Uh, uh, this was posted originally on the forum by uh, Dietrich W. And it looks like that in, screen sharing nope. is not working anyway. I'm afraid, like I just, I fear for what might happen if I try to, uh, if I try to properly screen share with you guys. Cause what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to refresh my capture card, which will about nine Don't times out of 10, <laughs> it's um, gonna blue screen, the computer. blue screen, the computer. Is this not working? So for I'm going to find another way to share with you guys. Here we go. We'll just do it this way. This is, no, no, it, it didn't work. I tried it already. It's, it's all good. Try it, try it now. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. So there we go. Um, <laughs> moving on. I tried. Uh, the micro console. All right, so this was the original article is on Engadget. I'm just gonna. Sorry, guys, I got to do this kind of manually here. This is gonna be kind of ghetto. So add uh, screen region. region. Blipity boopity boop boop, and there we go. Blipity boopity boop boop. Hey, that is beatboxing according to you. All right, Razer's micro console, a gaming micro console with Android TV available this fall. It should be noted that this is just a render and this is not the finalized hardware, although they haven't exactly gone out on a limb in terms of showing it's, us something that's difficult to it, manufacture. It's Razer, so it's probably gonna look something like that. There's green underglow, it's black, and there's a logo at the top. Uh, matte black, specifically. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay. It's matte black. Also, the logo is shiny. <laughs> the logo is gloss, so... I get such a kick out of the, out of the uh, press statement. The micro console can stream movies, music, and other apps for large screen entertainment with an emphasis on gaming. So it's... Oh, oh, Google hardcore gaming. So it's Google Android oh. TV, and it's got an NVIDIA chip inside it, and um, probably it'll have game stream. Good job, Razer. So I think we just completely <laughs> predicted exactly everything about this product. I yep. think that's how they're going to handle the hardcore gaming, though, and I'm really excited about that. I think it makes as much sense as Steam OS, um, just in-home streaming, whether it's through Valve's solution or NVIDIA's solution, is definitely the future in my mind. And uh, One thing I'm interested in is how much SteamOS might slow down Windows piracy. Might. Not at all. No? Okay, tell me this. 
Uh, LibreOffice. Do you still use it? Uh, I didn't use LibreOffice. OpenOffice. It's the same thing. Oh, actually, I do. St- Never mind. I do use LibreOffice, and yes, I still do use it. Do you use it if you have a choice? Yes, actually. Oh, all right. Um, but in certain situations, I use it on my test bench when viewing test results because it can, there's an option that it can give you a preview Okay, window. do you use it when you have serious work to do? <laughs> That's serious work to do. That's you, like, like You know what I mean, and you're dodging the question. <laughs> over and over again, I might add. <laughs> no, but we have legit copies of Office. That's true, right. So, okay, but okay, Office 365, though. Office, though. I'm using Office 365 now. Honestly, for the price, it's a great value. Subscription-based, I'm kind of sold on. When now. I was in school and stuff, I just used Open Office. Yeah, but in school, you got free copies of Office. No, I mean, like, not, not that school. Oh, okay, right. Other school. Yeah. Not, like, piracy school. No, I'm just kidding. You, through through his program at school, he was able to get copies of Microsoft. Yeah, because I was in a software development thing. Yeah. So you get the, the yeah. Microsoft anyway, and Alliance. Razor's thing is unnamed so far. Um, interface will be managed by Android TV. Expected this fall. Um, this is kind of funny. Xorbot from the forum had a really great comment for Xorbot. the haters saying that <laughs> Ouya and Mojo were commercial failures. This will be too. And then he responded to that saying, how many consoles were unsuccessful or moderately successful until the NES came along and made the formula work? I thought that was a really good point. I don't necessarily agree that Razer's console is going to be the big winner here. And I think it's probably going to be some integration within TVs that is going to finally gain traction. Not smart TV. I think it'll be more like what they're trying to do with cars. Yes. Apple and Google have been talking about that lately. Replacing the craptastic job that they've been doing making their cars intelligent, they'll be doing the same thing by replacing the craptastic job that every single TV manufacturer has done with smart TVs. The problem with, okay, the problem here though is the difference between car manufacturers and TV makers. Because car manufacturers have been through the worst of it. They're like, okay. We suck. <laughs> we need outside help. Someone, please, come tell us how to capture the minds and hearts of our customers again. Please. <laughs> Whereas TV makers are still living in, like, this castle of arrogance that we can do no wrong. And $40,000 TV. We're all going to create our own freaking ridiculously stupid way of doing things that has nothing to do with anything else and this this comes back to and it's not a tv it's the g3 again but this comes back to my g3 review i'm just going to try and find my notes on it it's probably not going to make it into my review because my review notes are five pages and my limit for (laughs) myself is two pages so but but this is this is great share and connect under networks is like an lg proprietary sharing thing and i'm just like Uh, What I have in here is LG and Samsung need to pull their heads out of their asses and work with open standards on this kind of stuff. I challenge anyone at LG or Samsung to come up with one time, one time, that some proprietary, stupid, only within one brand standard worked on a consumer product. One time. I bet you can't. It works with professional grade stuff. Yep. Sony gets away with it with professional grade stuff because professionals have the budget to go and invest in an entire ecosystem, whereas consumers buy things piecemeal. I mean, think about how you buy things as a consumer, things other than food. Let's talk about more expensive stuff. Obviously, you go buy food, you buy an entire meal. So you go and you buy a hamburger, you buy some fries, and you buy something else, and you expect all those things to go together reasonably well. But let's say you go and you buy a house. Linus doesn't cook much. Actually, let's not let's not talk about let's not talk about house. Let's come up with something, uh, um, hmm. None something of with analogies. a lot of pieces that kind of work together. Okay, Lego. Let's say you furnish a house. There's a great example. Do you go and buy all the same brand furniture, just because there's a chance that it will operate together correctly? <laughs> Or do you buy what suits your taste and what's appropriate to each of the different things that you're trying to achieve? That's how people buy things. Consumers. That's how consumers buy things. And a lot of times, especially in the technology space, you might buy something and then three years later you have to buy something else. And then even if you did buy within the same ecosystem, they're probably not going to work together anyways. I know. My favorite is the Galaxy Tab 10.1, the original one that didn't get support for all share. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the um, the cellular... Everyone's saying they all buy IKEA furniture. The... <laughs> <laughs> Wrecked. 
<laughs> I get wrecked. Oh, it's so true. The cellular oh, yeah. uh, wireless version had it. And there was like a firmware hack that the Samsung rep was telling me I could do. And I'm just like, really? Why don't you guys just enable this crap? You're locking your own customers out of your own stupid proprietary yeah, thing yeah. that doesn't even work that well anyway. Yeah, yeah. And like, I, I, I actually don't know anyone that buys a new... A new PC, laptop, phone, fridge, washing machine, dryer, TV, and tablet. Tablet all at the same time. <laughs> on game no. console now. On game console. Like, what? It's like it just doesn't work that way. No. And no amount of trying to make it work that way is, is going to make it work. Going to make way. it work that way. Ugh. All right, we should probably do our sponsor spot here. Okay. So uh, this is cool. You guys, some of you anyway, are gonna probably like this. I thought it was pretty neat. Stay on this page, I guess. Save the pages. Save the changes. Um, leave this page. Here we go. So this is fun. We actually had a really great live stream with Intel earlier this week. I'm gonna post it in the Twitch chat here. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna throw up the lower the lower third that we used for it. So it was hashtag Devil's Canyon and Intel's new CPUs uh, just launched and we actually had one of their product marketing engineers, uh, his name's Darren Lynch, on the show to talk about behind the scenes. Which is something, so guys, go ahead, bookmark that, go watch it later. It's only about an hour long, and it's really, really informative because there's a ton of stuff about what goes on to bring a CPU to market that you don't even think about. I mean, we were talking about all kinds of crazy options, like having a liquid cooler in the box, having a gold-plated IHS. I mean, these are things they've considered. And he talked about the reasons why they would be cool, the reasons why they just don't work in the real world, um, even things like changing the box. He talks about the challenges involved in that, and it might not sound that interesting right now, but it was. Like something like, remember when AMD did that tin box yeah. for the FX processors? It's, he kind of laughed when I brought it up because he was like, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because um, I can tell you exactly how much that box cost. We ran out and looked at how much it would cost to source it. In fact, we've done it several times, both before and after the competitor did it. <laughs> just and just every time we just kind of looked at it and we went, you know, like we've looked at packaging for extreme editions that's like a column like a clear column that has the CPU floating at the top. That would be pretty cool. And he's just like, but that package is going to cost $50. So, I mean, do we take that out of our margin? Do we charge the customer another 50 bucks? Then you get customers complaining they're paying $50 for packaging. And he's like, and frankly, I agree with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's why it just comes in this box. <laughs> and, uh, I, cause I, I, and it was funny because I didn't actually realize at the time that I had someone who had as much influence on the call. Because I was like, yeah, and what's up with Intel changing the Extreme Edition packages to blue instead of black? And he's like, well, that was actually me who made that call. <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. So he was straight up responsible for some of the things that I've been whining about for the last few years. And it was really interesting to get his... And to he was really perspective. Yeah, he was really honest, which was really refreshing and really cool. So guys, I'm going to link that one more time. And you should definitely check it out because it was super educational. And uh, there you go. All right. So let's move on to our next sponsor today. And that is Dollar Shave Club. If I could find... I, I there have, it is. I've Woo! arranged your arsenal of All right. Items. So I have all the Dollar Shave Club stuff. Now... What? Here, you can hold these. What? Thank you. Okay. So basically, guys, Dollar Shave Club, if you're not familiar with it already, <laughs> is the fast, easy way to get high-quality shaving and bathroom supplies delivered to your door. And it's funny because I actually had someone joking on Twitter about why Dollar Shave Club would sponsor this guy when they could sponsor someone with, you know, a manly, awesome beard like Logan instead. To which I have this to say. Over the last few days... Oh, oh no, my, my screen sharing's not working anymore. Oh, right. I wanted to share my screen with you Wasn't guys. Wasn't that on the network? Oh, um, no, but it could be. Yes. Okay, I will do that. So I will share this on the network, and then I will... Dude, you guys should have seen him on Highlander. He tried to be a Highlander. Yep. I was like... He I was, was grizzly. I was, I was like, yep, yeah, I'm going to do this. So people are like... He was Linus Grizzly. 
yeah. Linus can't even grow a beard. Why does Dollar Shave Club, you know, sponsor this guy? And the answer is because if they didn't, then it's possible that you would have to deal with this. Oh, he's hideous. That is what I look like if I have about four days of, uh, of stubble. It's disgusting, it's horrible, and thanks to Dollar Shave Club's high quality razors that you can get delivered to you once a month so you can use a fresh razor for a nice, clean, and comfortable shave every single week, you don't have to look at that. Isn't it awful? Everyone should sign up for Dollar Shave Club right now so that they never have to look at or like that. That's the most compelling pitch that I can come up with. Also, they have other great products. Their shave butter makes things more comfortable for you to, you know, take the hair off your face with. Also, it goes on clear so you can see what you're doing. And finally, One Wipe Charlie's, which I could do a live demonstration for you with, but no, I'm getting, okay, no one wants a live demonstration. Peppermint scented butt wipes for I'm, men. I'm sure someone wants a live demonstration. They just plain do a better job. Think about it this way. Baby wipes, are they pre-moistened or are they dry? They're, pre, I, they're pre moistened? They're pre moistened. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. Adult toilet paper. Is it pre moistened or is it dry? It's dry. What's more effective to remove something? A baby wipe or a piece of toilet paper? There you go. All right, and our last one is Squarespace. So this one is actually fun. We're going to do our winner announcement from last week. So we're gonna search for hashtag Linus Squarespace, where I asked anyone who has used our offer code, so that's offer code Linus, over the last little while, I asked for everyone to submit your own Squarespace sites, and we were going to pick a winner at random. So we're gonna do that in a moment, but first guys, Squarespace, Space is the easy, fast, affordable way to make a beautiful website. It really, truly is. We use it for LinusMediaGroup.com. Luke's building his own website with it. It's just plain better and easier to use than a lot of other options out there. They have 24-7 tech support. All their templates look really great, and they've got different templates that are designed for all kinds of different uses, whether you want a little site for your small business, a store, a blog, a portfolio. It'll look great on the desktop, on mobile, on a laptop, everything in between, maybe not on a watch, although I should let the Squarespace guys know. I want to see like, like, um, you know, circular web Google, design? Google Wear optimized Squarespace <laughs> templates in the near future. If they can offer that, then they'll be the first to have the world's most pointless feature. <laughs> So, so random. Now we can web browse like this. <laughs> what, what's that? Seriously, I can't see. Seriously though, Squarespace has features that matter, mm. like enabling you to just uh, use their logo designer to create a cool logo for yourself. It's actually really fast to use. We did it live once, and it took us like a couple minutes to make a cool logo and like preview it on a business card. I wasn't quite done building my website because of E3 stuff and everything that came up when my trial ran up, mm -hmm. and I felt so bad. <laughs> Because they like send you these emails. They're like, what could we have done better? And I'm like, nothing. You were fine. <laughs> it was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with you. I had to go on a trip and work. I promise I'll finish my website. Oh, that's the saddest thing ever. <laughs> All right. So here is our featured Squarespace site. Oh, I can't, can't screen share with go you. Go to the URL there. I'll go to the URL over here. This is driving me bananas. Dandy is not ugly. I don't know why that person even said that he was, but... So yeah. another really cool thing about Squarespace is that if you sign up for a full year at a time, they will actually give you the first year of your domain purchase. So that gets thrown in there just like that. So check this out. This is goprotips.squarespace.com. You can actually tell if you've seen enough Squarespace sites that it was put together in very, very little time, but it looks good. Every Squarespace site pretty much has that, okay, everything kind of works, and you got this slider, and these drop-downs look kind of nice. You can hey, go GoPro ahead and check tips out some video guy. editing tips. Figure out how we can make a, like, 24-hour GoPro recording thing. Yeah, we were discussing that on Highlander, how cool yeah. it would be if we could um, do... Oh, am I even... Oh, crap, I'm not screen sharing with these guys, am Lol. I? Lol. Lol. Okay, Twitch how chat will tell us once they catch up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow. Oh, there we go. <laughs> They're annoying. starting to tell us. <laughs> what the heck is this? How uh, was I, I probably doing this grabbed before? a certain screen region. Okay. <laughs> Add screen region. 
There you go. There we go. There's don't a, worry, we'll get this. you can click on something weird. Squarespace, if you're watching, please donate me. Please donate me. Okay. So we're going to go back. So anyway, there you go. Now I'm showing you guys what the site actually looks like. And so GoPro tips, if you're watching, please contact me, send me a PM on the forum, and I will go ahead and I will get you hooked up with your Squarespace website free for an entire year. And I got the go ahead from Squarespace to do one of these giveaways every once in a while. So guys, nice. stay tuned that you can do a two week trial, create your site, and then you can go ahead and submit it to me with the hashtag when I ask you for it for a chance to win your own website for free. So you can go ahead and you can go through here. You can see how the little drop downs work. You can go check out some video editing tips. Yeah, we were talking during Highlander about how we could get a GoPro running for an entire year at a time, or not an entire year, for an day. entire day at a time. And we figured it, you could probably do it with their proprietary interface. If you could have a video feed to an external recorder and then you could have an external battery and then both ends of the of the connection would have to be waterproof yeah. and like damage proof. You can have a custom kind of case stuff. for it so that the connector is like made into the case so that it's waterproof and stuff. But if there's some way to do that, even if it's not waterproof, someone tell me because that's way too cool. All right. Anyway, so... Just one more time, guys. Squarespace.com slash Linus for 10% off. Use offer code Linus and go check out that stream. I'm going to go ahead and link you guys to that again here in the video description. It definitely is, or in the video description in the Twitch chat, it definitely is worth the time. And then finally, our last sponsor today, um, Dollar Shave Club. Right, so head over to dollarshaveclub.com and sign up now so that you don't look like a scary, scary person. Should I make them look at it when more time sure oh my gosh look at him he's hideous i wish i could we, zoom it in more we really should have taken that picture right when you got off the mountain because we just all looked so messed i up. know i don't think my eyes have ever looked that sunken before in my life i i i told you i went to the washroom and looked in the mirror when we got to that restaurant and was just like what i hardly <laughs> recognized my own face me too like it was that it was, was pretty horrible and uh, <laughs> thank goodness I have I have shaved now. You know what's funny is uh, that reminds me of something that I thought of at the beginning of the show to improve the show. So I made you guys look at that. But check this out. I came up with this brilliant idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> check this out. Oh. The Wan Show, now with 30% more handsome. <laughs> sure. And he never needed a co-host again. <laughs> See, what I was trying to say is that he should at least try to find some way to delay that video. There's got to be some way. I would be surprised if you can do that. <laughs> I don't think so. As long as we don't crash XSplit, you're okay to Yeah, I know we're okay good. To tinker I, I, with I don't want to mess with it anymore. But if you could have one side that was delayed a little bit, so it like, looked at least slightly like there was two different movements yeah that would be pretty cool i guess that would help a lot yeah. okay I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that i'm sorry you guys I, you could have to... like linus and then make the other one like that that weird inverted color thing so it's like linus and hulk linus <laughs> yeah. i've put you guys through so much today <laughs> all right the original poster for this one was diff DLF? I don't know. Whatever. Um, so Forbes.com is the article that we're using to reference here. And P.S. Now prices have been leaked. Someone told me to push you out of the way so it was double me. Oh, for crying out loud. It just keeps screwing up the uh, the screen region yeah. capture. I think what I have to do is just do this. There you go. And then we could all look at Forbes's ad together and <laughs> continue to the Thanks, site. Thanks, Forbes. Thanks for that, dog. All right, PlayStation Now, a good idea with a bad plan, says the writer. So Ooh. pretty much uh, we're looking Slam. at pricing anywhere from four to seven US dollars to rent a game for a week. You can rent for four hours, seven days, 30 days, or 90 days with some time periods unavailable for some games. There are a couple of issues with the way that they're handling it, though. So pricing's a little bit questionable with four hour chunks of time coming in at around i think it's three to four dollars yeah. so you're paying near or about a dollar an hour to play the game um something that might be okay if you just want to try it before you buy um but i mean another factor is that these are mostly older games 
And I'm kind of sitting here going, like, I could probably find one in a used bin and pay, like, 15 bucks for it or 10 bucks or 20 bucks and own it forever. Someone in the chat said, or just get the same price on a Steam sale. And then, well, remember, this is this is PlayStation games. So, yeah. so this is, like, their... Yeah. Um, and then it's up to about $30 for a 90-day period. And again, with an older game, you're looking at a situation where for 30 bucks you could probably just own it forever and get a disc. Yep. Um, I think the biggest problem here is not the idea. I, I think the idea of of renting games digitally is still fine. Yep. The the Forbes article, right? The are the Forbes author criticizes this concept in general and says something like a subscription based service would be much better. But I suspect Sony's Sony's hands are pretty much tied on that one. I don't think they'd be able to do it. Well, they, yeah, because right now they're leaving pricing up to the publisher. And I think they'd have to. And I think they would have to do that. I mean, it's much like Steam. Valve doesn't set the pricing for a third-party title. Yeah. So Valve can't just come in and say, okay, we're going to have a Steam subscription. You pay 60 bucks a month and you can play any game on Steam because... To do that, they'd have to set up like a Netflix-like service, which would be insanity. How do you, how do you divvy up the funds according to what got watched? Um, or maybe you do, or maybe you don't. I don't know. It seems, like, it seems like we're asking for a lot, and at least this is a step in the right direction in terms of digital distribution. Um, it's just, it's not quite there yet. It's got to be cheaper. Older games in particular probably shouldn't be very expensive. Um, one, one issue I have with sort of pay per use in general is that it's going to lead developers even more down that path where multiplayer is the only thing that matters because they're going to be optimizing for playtime. Yeah rather than necessarily compelling storytelling, which is something some... that does have a value. Yeah, like, uh, I know Transistor isn't really the longest game ever, but it ends when it should end. Like, I feel like they, if they added things to it and they made it longer, it would have just been wasted time. Have you played much Bravely Default yet, speaking of games that don't end when they should end? <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay. Not much. I played a little bit. You're driving me crazy, because I don't want to spoil the game for you, because there are parts of it that are good, but... I haven't had any time. Man. Yeah, I know. And then, like, on the plane back, which I, when I was intending to play it, I was just like, <laughs> like was, no, no way that was happening. <laughs> I passed out so hard on the plane yeah. back from Highlander. Me too. Oh, well, we, you and me passed out on the floor in the airport. Yeah, that's before true. Before the plane. We did do that thing. <laughs> All right, so the OP for the first Android, and that is to say robot, not Android, the mobile operating system. That gets system. real confusing. Yeah, I know, right? A newscaster. This was posted by Top War Gamer in the forum, and this stuff is scary, man. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and load up the YouTube video here. I apologize for this slightly less elegant than usual way of doing this. Um, let's go ahead. Don't get the whole screen. You don't need to see your, your taskbar. Well, whatever, man. I don't care. Um, so screen share with Linus. We'll go ahead and maximize that. So Japan unveils the world's first Android newscaster. So he hands her a piece of paper. Um, apparently the robot has perfect language skills and a sense of humor. Man, that's creepy. Um, this guy there's, is there's certain slightly parts. less creepy. He's Well, he's, done, he's made like... That's the guy that made the robot of himself. That was actually even crazier than this. There's certain times when it's like, like this chick when she's sitting at certain points in time and when it pans past the other girl, very specific points in time where it's very hard to tell. Other than that, though, the, the movements, you can still tell. That one, I think the other girl looks more realistic, in my opinion. Yeah, probably. Mainly but anyway, she's uh, she's reading some news about an earthquake. Um, obviously, a lot of this is programmed right now, and they're not able to just kind of come up with things on their own. But yeah. the objective is to keep improving this. And, uh, yeah, I guess... Uh, the future is this, going to be this, an interesting time and place. This brings up a conversation that I actually brought up when we were at the airport, mm -hmm. which is where everyone is using the automated terminals. Yep. And I, I noticed one of the big things that we got flack for on the show, not flack, but one of the big things that became a conversation when we've talked about automation on the show before is people have brought up that people need human interaction. And I see that being disproven everywhere. The amount of times that I see people voluntarily go through the self-automated checkout instead of the person-driven checkout at stores is getting more and more and more. And then now at airports, it almost becomes frustrating to have to deal with people. 
It's, yep. it's kind of annoying because it's like, oh, I have to deal with this person who's probably going to be a jerk when I could have maybe just gotten through the terminal with no problem. The flip side of that is that on both our flight to Denver and our flight back, the they automated the terminal, terminal systems ever. That's the, the problem. The automated terminal didn't pick up my reservation on the way there and then yours and Ed's reservations on the, on way, the way back. back because and it we, thought we already checked in, which is really bad. And we had to go talk to a person. Yeah. So... They yeah. can make them better, though, but that's, 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 I, I don't know about that whole required human inter interaction argument. Flip side. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to get you to cover this one because um, you're the VR Cardboard? geek. Yeah. So this project was originally thought of by uh, French Googlers David Cause and Damien Henry in part of their 20% thing, which I thought was gone, but is apparently still here. So that's cool. So the 20% thing is where 20% of your time at Google has to be spent doing kind of your own independent projects. And then uh, people thought this thing was so freaking cool that they jumped on and made SDKs for it and it actually became a much bigger deal. Is this screen sharing? Yep. So you, base, you saw it. If you click it again, I think it goes back together. If you scroll up more... I think there's a way to make it there go slower. There you go. If you slower. keep scrolling up, if you there we go, there we go. If you manually scroll it, it goes slower. So you can see this is the package that people got at Google I/O. You can't just buy this, I don't think. So if you went to Google I/O, you got this package. So you pull the tab thing, and then it folds out all nicely. But you can make this on your own. Uh, if you have a laser cutter, they actually have the file that you need for the laser cutter to be able to read that file and then cut it for you. Or there's instructions on how to cut it with like a nice exacto knife or something like that. And the magnet on the side with the like washer thing that's sitting there is actually a, a they button. They can't see you, but sure, now they can. There's a magnet on the side, which I, I actually wanted you to scroll to it, not look at me. But either way, there's a magnet on the side, which looks like it doesn't really have a use. But if you're looking at something and you want to select it, you just pull the magnet down, which is actually really smart. And it apparently works really well from the videos that I've seen, which is really cool. Um, they haven't tried it on a ton of phones yet. Fully compatible phones are Google Nexus 4 and 5, Motorola Moto X, Samsung Galaxy S4 and 5, and Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Partially compatible phones are HTC One, Motorola Moto G, and Samsung Galaxy S3. That's really not a ton of phones. Um, it's uh, about a 180 meg app and includes a bunch of stuff that you can do already. So you can fly around on Google Earth. Uh, you can go on a tour of Versailles with a local guide. You can watch YouTube videos on a massive screen. So it's just using the lenses. So that the lenses are one of the things you'll have to figure out how to source. They help um, you though. So you use those lenses to make the screen appear much larger and further away than it is. And, and it is a custom YouTube app. Like if you're watching the video and you look over to the right, there will be other video selections and you can use that thing on the side to select those videos. Like it's fairly interesting. I don't know. Um, I mean, obviously this isn't going to take the place of something like Oculus, like we not, were joking in the yeah, intro. <laughs> it's not trying to though. It's uh, some things that'll be really interesting is stuff like street view, stuff like Google earth. Yeah. Um, the, the Versailles local guide, Wind, Windy Day. Windy Day will be really cool. I've used, I've used Windy Day on Moto X. I don't know if you have, um, it's actually yep. kind of fun even with just the Moto X yeah, and being able cool. to do it with a cardboard thing would be kind of awesome. Windy well. Day is kind of a little interactive thing where you kind of look around with your screen and it's kind of like a little movie, but, but it be already sort and of interactive. You, you control the camera essentially. Yeah. So you, you follow this hat pretty yeah. much. That's what happens, but it's actually, it's pretty cool. It's so. pretty neat. Yeah, I'm definitely going to make one. I don't have access to a laser cutter, so I'm probably going to try to get a really sharp knife nice. and do the best that I can. I'm not going to pizza box it. I'm actually going to try and source like proper materials, so I'll see how I can do there. If you are interested in making one, definitely go to Google's website, which I believe is developers.google.com slash cardboard, because they actually have sourced everything for you already. It's very possibly out of stock because a whole bunch of people have been buying them. And if you look at one of them and then look at the um, items frequently bought together, <laughs> they're all the other ones, so they're pretty easy to find. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's they also help you source it locally. So they'll be like, here's an Amazon or other website link to this product. And also here's all of its specs if you want to try and find it somewhere else that you can buy it. All right, another news. Intel has apparently asked AMD for access to Mantle for an experiment. So uh, there's nothing that sounds super committal. The original article here is from Tweaktown from Intel on this. I mean, basically, yeah, for an experiment, 
Um, they have reaffirmed their position with DirectX, saying they are still committed to this open standard that um, they think is going to continue to drive the industry forward and address the previous issues with um, API overhead and all the stuff that Mantle was looking to try to help developers with. But that isn't to say that Intel is completely dismissing it, which I think is really interesting because yeah. as much as there's the whole AMD versus NVIDIA fanboy war, something that a lot of people forget is that Intel actually has more market share for graphics than the two of the others combined. And this has been true for years and years and years yep. and years. It's actually something that uh, Darren, our, our expert from Intel, brought up. And so if Intel were to stay committed to DirectX, that could pretty much dictate the direction the industry goes. And if Intel were to get on board with Mantle, along with the 47 game developers that are signed up for the API, then that could dictate the direction that the industry goes. It's amazing how much power Intel has in very strange ways sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, something that the article also mentions is that NVIDIA has apparently only signed up Crytek and Ubisoft to its GameWorks program. However, I think that that could be a little bit deceptive. I don't think that AAA... Uh, game makers are the ones who are going to mostly take advantage of a program like GameWorks. Yeah. I see that more as an indie play, and I think we might see more come out of that in the next couple of years. But um, apparently AMD responded by asking Intel for a month or two until it's out of closed beta. And um, there we go. An Intel spokesperson said at the time of initial Mantle announcement, we were already investigating rendering overhead based on game developer feedback. Our hope was to build consensus on potential approaches to reduce overhead with additional data. We have publicly asked them to share the spec with us several times as part of examination of potential ways to improve APIs and increase efficiencies. So that doesn't really sound a whole lot like they're planning to use Mantle or push towards Mantle. They just want to mess with it. It sounds more like they just want to dink around with it in the lab. Which is, I don't know, that's cool. I get it. Maybe optimizations or something. Who knows? Uh, the Moto 360 watch face competition is over. This is actually the one I liked best, even though I didn't end up voting. The one? Uh, won? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there, I, there was a couple that I was like, ooh, I would have absolutely no problem with that one. This was definitely the one that I liked favorite. best. Yeah, me too. I mean, as much as I don't prefer to read an analog face if I don't have to, this looks really good. Yeah, it does. Uh... The one thing that does bother me is a lot of the space is taken up with telling me the time, whereas I would like for a lot of the space to be taken up with reading my text message. I have pretty good eyes. It can. And I like small fonts. Yes, I know you can You can change it out to whatever you want, but I wish that instead of just having an icon for Gmail, there was more room um, on the main watch face to, to to read messages like if we could put the time up here and then have message previews down here personally or something. i don't mind that because i don't want it to be aggressive yep and i don't i don't hate this either yeah. i actually quite like you, well it. you said it was your favorite one it so was I, my I, favorite i didn't one. think you hated it just like personally i i don't like reading things until i want to read them i end up marking things unread a lot because yep. i'll accidentally click on something and just be like damn it i need to read this later i'm not ready for this right now so I don't mind it kind of hiding in there for now. This is uh, funny because it kind of ties into one of our sponsors. Um, where nice Dollar Shave... Oh, oh, right. I keep forgetting that we're not doing the normal thing. Uh, this ties into one of our sponsors pretty well because Dollar Shave Club's whole thing is, you know, oh, uh, razors with vibrating handles and all these features that actually don't do anything. We don't do any of that stuff. Um, well, this is Oral-B's new toothbrush that pairs to your phone via Bluetooth. Freaking genius. So this is posted by Nissanth, and basically it gives you a bunch of information, including things like how you can brush for better results, and it can share your, uh, your brushing habits with your healthcare professionals, something that I'm sure that my dentist would be like, what? If I told him about it. Why do I care? <laughs> and there's that one time that you leave it plugged in and on. It's like, he brushed for three days. <laughs> like, what? No? I'm sure there's a safeguard against that. I'm Are sure. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Remember the zero voltage thing that happened? No. What is this? That, that, certain, that certain board that reports voltage of your CPU. And it was like, zero volts. Oh, yeah, right. Things that you would think... 
it would just have you'd like sanity checks. Built-in sanity checks need to be a thing. Yeah. Because without them, you can end up with some really funny software stuff. Um, EV blog, however he pronounces that. This, this is yeah. Anyways, this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, posted a great video about how solar roadways are basically um, grade A BS. Um, did the math and pretty much at the end of the video, the conclusion is they would consume more power than they produce. They have proven absolutely nothing with respect to what they can handle in terms of weight and what they can handle in terms of traction. Um, they are extremely expensive. You can watch the video here on the forum if you want. The original poster here was Juratrun or something along Juratrun. those lines. Juratrun. Um, I mean, it's a great idea in theory. They raised over $2 million through crowdfunding, but it is pretty unlikely that this will see the light of day in this generation. It's something that we talked about originally on the show, and we kind of went, okay, yeah. Something a lot of people are saying in Twitch chat, and uh, yeah, we know is that there's actually been a lot of videos about this out yes. for a long time. This but this one was really good. Yeah. Well, some so of the other ones are pretty good too, but yeah. either way. So, I mean, yeah, so what we need then is just some kind of outlandish idea that sounds like really great to eco-freaks, and then we need like a really great campaign video, and so then... So freaking word ways? Well, that wasn't their campaign video. That's the funny thing about it. No, but that's what drove more. Yes, it drove a lot of it. So then we need like that, we need to find that guy to make our, our viral, our viral video. Should be like solar trees <laughs> they grow with sunlight <laughs> you should fund us they also make oxygen wow you need that to live isn't that freaking awesome <laughs> they look great in your yard and they live for hundreds of years they're seasonal whoa <laughs> or they're not maybe wow! not it's up to you evergreen you have the choice man evergreen can be a stretch goal <laughs> And growing your own weed plant can be the next stretch goal. <laughs> Stimulate economies if they make it legal. Oh, it's funny because we were in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. All right. Also posted by Twisted Dictator on the forum, Witcher 3 to feature boob physics. Which is one of those things where it's like, if Witcher 3 was the first game to include boob physics then this, I Hopefully guess, would be news. Hopefully they perform good boob physics. But apparently Next Power Up thought it was news, so... so my favorite thing is either, either they jump around and they just sit there like solid bricks, or they jump around and then they go like... No one can see you right now, but I think they should probably see that uh, illustration of what you were talking about. <laughs> so I said either... I'm sorry, how did you want the boobs to move again? <laughs> I didn't say I wanted them to move this way. I said with bad boob physics, they do move this way. So either they jump around and they just sit there, which is not realistic, or they jump around and then like... A while afterwards, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's not how they work either. We've seen that in quite a few games and it gets super stupid after a while. Or like there'll be a slight movement, like they'll just slightly get bumped and it's like, oh, they'll just sit there bouncing for a while. It's like, no, <sighs> You no. know, the thing is, if these, Make it look real. if these strategies didn't work, game developers wouldn't do it. So for all the people who get all upset about this kind of thing, just if you didn't buy into it, if you didn't make a bunch of noise well, about it, it would go away. I'm you down know, for more realistic gameplay. So and, if they if they make that realistic, that's cool. I think it should be. And I'm all for equality. So I think we should have like realistic testicle physics. <laughs> but, but you know what? If CD, unless you're playing Rust. <laughs> If CD Projekt Red wanted to seem like, you know, very uh, equality minded, then they could, they would definitely do that. Like if we had realistic junk swaying. But then there isn't that many games other than like Rust that you're actually going to see that. Yeah, but they could. Well, boobs are very okay. exterior. You're the gonna see them even if they're covered up. Okay. The thing about the Sometimes. thing about the thing about breasts, though, is that game developers design their game around making sure that the breast physics are on display the whole time. So they design the female characters' outfits. So like you want to someone put the to design a game yes. based around? Yeah. Having the junk physics 
there for the world to see. Why what? not? So the camera angle's gonna have to be like down on. <laughs> what? Or like you know how okay you know how Lara Croft like shamelessly uh, provocatively stretches whenever you're not doing anything so for a while. So some dude's gonna have to do like the unstick step. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have to have realistic physics. <laughs> or just like the you know the cross adjustment. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh no. Okay. Oh wow. Swimming Simulator 2014. Yes. <laughs> We all, need, all the banana we need, hammocks. Uh, we need the uh, Nvidia to add that into their 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 yeah like, GameWorks, GameWorks library, library for yeah. for like junk physics. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. all the viewers laugh. No, Twitch breaks. Every yeah, once I know in Twitch while. breaks. I'm just kidding. Oh man. Oh, people on the Twitch chat are like, stop, please. <laughs> And it's funny because your timing is excellent. I think we're pretty much done here. Yep. Are there any other topics in the doc you really wanted to hit? Uh, we didn't talk about Highlander at all, but I guess we have all the videos coming. So it's not Yeah, like Highlander video. videos will be coming. You're going to see videos from Austin. You're going to see videos from us. Oh, okay. This is kind of a big deal. Microsoft is offering. This was originally posted mm. by Good Bytes on the forum. Microsoft is offering up to $650 off a of Surface Pro 3 if you exchange a MacBook Air at a Microsoft store. It does have to be working, but quite frankly... I would take the MacBook Air over the Surface at Ooh. this point. Which isn't to say I would buy a MacBook. Ooh, but you bought a Surface. I did, but I'm going to sell it. For Yeah, not for a MacBook. Yeah, not for a MacBook. I'm going to keep using my XPS 12. Whoops. Because to me, this... With the screen. Okay, so here. Whoops. There, oh, it okay, well, that's basically how it works. But Okay, so you get a little bit of... Not much. more thinness and it is lighter and it is smaller like it's significantly lighter than the xps 12 is it enough that it matters though like no it's an it's enough it's ah. it's something okay so you get you get more thinness so there's that i mean i'm not making the point here about the thinness it no, really is thinner you, you didn't make much of a point about thinness or weight because there's not much weight difference between there those. is a significant weight difference um but the problem for me is that windows 8 is not a good tablet experience it's actually nothing to do with the hardware the hardware is <laughs> the hardware is very beautiful um pick it up more and then yeah junk physics there you go. <laughs> Not that I'm calling the Surface junk. Um, the, the problem is just there's not yeah. enough USB uh. ports. Two USB ports is minimum to call it like a reasonably functional PC. We get one. Um, it does have mini display port out, which is nice compared to other tablets. There's no SD card reader to my knowledge, although they might have hidden one under there. No, they didn't. So there's no SD card reader or anything like that. It is very beautiful. The kickstand is a lot better than the first gen, which is the last time I tried one. It comes all the way out here. So that gives you a lot of different options. Like you can sit on a plane and you can uh, like lean it up against the seat in front of you. The magnetic lock for the keyboard, is pretty robust which is cool so you can kind of like lean it up against something in bed or you can put it down here and you can rest it on your knee and you can legitimately use it and all that stuff is great but the question i have to ask myself is why would i ever use it without the keyboard and then if i'm never going to use it without the keyboard then why wouldn't i just want my keyboard occasionally attached once in a while i do use windows 8 you as a tablet attached? sorry you mean yeah, permanently attached, yeah, like okay. this. Yeah. Once in a while, I do use Windows 8 as a tablet. When that happens, this may be bulkier, but it's good enough because I'm not going to do it very often. And that's going to be basically the conclusion of my Surface review. Um, apparently, Wendell has an SD card reader. Maybe I didn't find it. I'm not done my review yet. Like, I'm not actually filming this until next week, so I haven't... Basically, the way that I usually do my reviews is... Um, Apparently no, it's I, under the hinge. It's under the hinge? Apparently. That's a really weird... No, that seems pretty sensible. Under the hinge, eh? I don't... I don't... Oh, maybe that's the micro SD slot right there. There you go. Why would you put micro SD on it? Really? Oh. Oh, headache. Anyway. <laughs> um. Oh. <laughs> Not helpful when I'm offloading footage on a video set or something like that. Um... Oh, anyway, 
Where was I going with this? Right, so the way I typically do a review is I figure out as much as I can on my own without really looking at any other media coverage of it. Then I go back and I look at sort of the launch press release and all that stuff to make sure that I'm not missing anything critical. So I would have figured the SD card out. I'm still not particularly pleased with it and I'm still not gonna switch from a convertible like this because it just doesn't make any sense to me. I use it as a tablet so rarely that I might as well have something that, here, this is, this is the ultimate example of why I'm not gonna use this because I can use it in my lap, sort of, but why have this, which if I go to, you know, oh, pick it up and it falls apart, why have that when I can just have this? which is weighted correctly to not fall off the back of me. I can pick it up however I want. I can turn it around. I can use it like this. It's just a lot more flexible. It's a lot more practical and it's cheaper. So at the same price, I would take the XPS 12. At a lower price, I would definitely take the XPS 12. Um, I don't know that there are many other convertibles that I like better than the XPS 12, though Sony's is terrible, like just tragic. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have a ton of experience with different convertibles. The I like that one a lot, though. The Yoga's excellent. I, um, when we had the Yoga at, at the NCX yeah. office, I liked it a lot. Well, people are bringing up the pen for the Surface. As someone who doesn't oh, use God. a pen, um, I'm not a big fan. Oh. Um, people who are talking about note-taking with a pen, yeah, I, I get that. Um, however... Show them the thing. Which thing? Oh, the fact that the only way to take a screenshot is with the pen? Oh, no, I meant like... like. Oh, right. So my issue with the pen is that it doesn't stash in the device, and the geniuses at Microsoft, I'm sure they're very smart, legitimately, but this is how you're supposed to attach the pen to the surface. There's a little magnet where the, uh, where the, the, the charging port is that you're supposed to attach the pen to, oh. it just comes off. And then, and then if you get a type cover... The, the innovative solution there is you stick a sticker on it. Don't worry, I know where it, oh, okay. You stick a sticker to it, and then you put the pen through the loop on the sticker. And I'm just like, really? You guys engineered a fraction of a cent solution to a problem that actually matters. That's what you did just there. I, yeah, like I, the, the reason why I like how the 2DS is made is it's super easy to get the pen because that's where they put the colored strap along the back. It's not even a strap, like the colored piece of plastic is where the pen goes. Like super I, easy to grab it, super easy to put it back. I get that it's thin and that's great, but I'm sorry. I just, I'm not keeping it. I was going to keep it if it was, if it was fantastic. The keyboard though is not nearly as bad as people are making it out to be. I actually quite like the type cover keyboard. It's surprisingly good. So there's that. All right. I think we're done here. Guys, thank you for watching The WAN Show. If you're tuning in late, the archive will be up on the YouTube sometime in the next little while or up on Twitch immediately. For those of you, we had someone complaining on the uh, on the forum about so, how uh, the archive goes up really late. And it's just like, uh, <laughs> it's up right away on Twitch. And they're just like, I don't want to watch on Twitch. I'm like, okay. It's kind of like when people message me on Facebook. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> I noticed on your Facebook, it says not to message you on Facebook and to message you on Twitter. But um, I don't have Twitter, so I'm messaging you here. I'm just like, Twitter's free, man. Sorry. There's a reason that I only accept messages on Twitter. And here, I will screen share with you guys. I will show you why I only accept messages on Twitter. I'm going to go on Facebook right now, and I'm share with you guys. You're not screen sharing right now, right? Nope. Okay, cool. Not yet. Okay, Please. so I'm going I'm to go on my, I'm a go on my Linus Tech Twitter, ma Facebook, Malaysian. Okay. Here we go. Twitter, ma Facebook, Malaysian. So here's my screen. Here is why I will never reply to Facebook messages. Because when I click on them and I write a reply, hello, sorry, I don't reply to Facebook messages. Press enter to send. Actually, it's a lot faster now. Okay, well, they, they're doing better. It used to be really, really slow to load messages. Like okay. that slow. It's better now. That was still pretty slow. No, that's pretty fast. Okay, it used to be really slow. Now I don't have an excuse, but still, RDM. RTM. Well, there's, 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 there's methodology now. 
You don't want to answer there. You want to answer somewhere else. Yes, and the thing so about Twitter, too, else? is I get a lot of people tweeting me saying, hey, I want to ask you a question that's longer than 140 characters. Um, how do I do that? And the answer is you don't because I get too many messages. Um, the best thing to do if you have a tech question is to post on the Linus Tech Tips forum. It's, like, really good. It is. That's a good place to go and ask questions because if you don't get the right answer the first time, um, someone else will post the right answer at some point. I so had someone do that and then tweet back to me saying that no one answered them they tweeted i checked times on things they tweeted me like three minutes after they posted their thing i checked it like 30 minutes afterwards and by the time i checked it there was a page and a half of comments nice i was like we should probably end the show at some point here but i could i could I rant have, about tweets forever i am doing after party tonight and i am doing my 24-hour charity stream that i talked about this weekend i don't know exactly when it'll start but it's happening you're crazy child's play man child's play is cool all right. Peace out, guys. Bye, everyone. Oh, dang it. That there wasn't a... Oh. Should we beatbox? I can't beatbox. I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's not percussion. Yeah, that's not really beatboxing either. <laughs> that's... I think we should have a junk physics shirt. What would be the logo, though? I think you know what the logo would be. But then we couldn't sell it. <laughs>